muhdathatin bid'a wa kulla bid'atin dalala wa kulla dalalatin fin nar rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli amma ba'du wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh As for today's discussion, insha'Allah, is paradise on earth. Oh, well, and firstly, what is the meaning of the earth? What is the meaning of the dunya? Because we find many perceptions and understanding of the dunya. Rampant amongst Muslims, their perception, the vision and the view of this dunya and rampant amongst the non-Muslims as well. What is this world? What is this dunya? Before we begin to delve into searching for Jannah, searching for paradise in this dunya. And if you go right to the beginning of this world, to the beginning of creation that even the Bible talks about the beginning of the book of Genesis talking about the creation of this world and then from there you can begin to understand how these people have a perception of this dunya وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامِ وَمَا مَثَّنَا مِنْ لُخُوبِ we created the heavens and the earth. Wama baynahuma, whatever is between the two. Referring to all the various planets and this earth, this dunya as well. And no fatigue touched us. Referring to none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ta'khuduhu sinatum wala nawm. Neither sleep nor slumber overtakes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sinner is that comes the pre-requisite before sleep. Nodding your eyes away before you fall into a deep sleep. None of that touches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from this initial blasphemy, as you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to their statement, of God created the heavens and the earth in six days and then he rested on the seventh. So that's the beginning of just seeking this dunya. If you blaspheme about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then obviously you can blaspheme on this world. That the whole goal of your whole life becomes seeking the pleasures of this dunya or of this world. Because then the world becomes the all end. You don't care about the creator, so likewise you don't care about the dunya. As long as you can gain from the dunya that which you want, that which fits into your pleasures and your desires, then with the hell to everything else, is a vision of these people. يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِّنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ خَافِلُونَ These people only know ظَاهِرًا مِّنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا you know, Muslims come and they say that the Ummah will rise when we have military power like them. When we have technological advances like them. When we begin to dress like them, eat like them, talk like them, walk like them. The Quran says, the only thing that these people know is ظاهرًا min al hayat dunya Travel across the world in seconds. Delve into the oceans. Travel into space. As for Akhirah, hum ghafilun. They are heedless. They don't know nothing about preparation for the Akhirah. So the dunya becomes their goal once again. To gain things from this dunya. وَقَالُوا مَا هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهَرِ What is this world? Except for the passing of time. We live and we die. And the only thing that will destroy us is the passing of time. And the ulama call these people a dahriyun. 
We just believe that time will come and take us away. There is no concept of resurrection or answering back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this dunya has become beautiful and alluring for them. Zuyina lilladina kafaru al-hayatu dunya Zuyina Tazyin Beautified For whom? Lilladina kafaru For those people who disbelieve The world becomes Their passion And their desire And we don't want to delve into How ulai kuffar Khalihim Dharhum yakulu wa yatamatta'u Leave them to eat and drink وَيُلْهِهْمُ الْأَمَلْ فَسَوْفَ يَعْلَمُونَ And a time will come over these people and eventually فَسَوْفَ يَعْلَمُونَ These people will know the reality. So we don't want to delve into them. ذَرْهُمْ يَأْكُلُوا وَيَتَمَتَّعُوا Leave them to eat and drink and to enjoy this dunya. Because these people كَالْأَنْعَامْ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلْ These people like animals, like cattle, Nay, they are even more astray than an animal. humul ghafilun. They are people who are heedless. I want to talk to Muslims. That what is our perception of the dunya? Because so many of us who believe in Ahlu Sunnah, who believe in the revival of the Sunnah, and I would not be extreme to say these views, that the dunya has hit us so hard that even the average person on the street doesn't have that much love of the dunya. Hubbu dunya. Love of the world. Al wahan. And what is al wahan? Love of this world. Wa karahiyatul maud. And a hatred for death. We blame al Yahud. Those people who claim to be Sha'bullah Mukhtar. The chosen children of God. They say that we are the children of God and we are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ فَلِمَا يُعَذِّبُكُمْ بِذُنُوبِكُمْ Then why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish you because of your sins? Many of us Muslims believe, behave in that same manner. We think we're شَعْبُ اللَّهِ مُخْتَارِ The chosen children of God. And when the boat begins to rock, then Islam goes out the window. In time of calamities, of trials, of fitan, then where is that iman then? Where is that deep conviction then? But rather we find clinging to the dunya. And you read the seerah of people who are classified as Ahlu Sunnah. The striving and the struggle that those people do. And even though this word has become a great big taboo at the moment. Al Jihadu fi sabilillah. To strive your utmost in everything. That is the history of Ahlu Sunnah. To strive in everything. But our love of the dunya has penetrated us to such a degree for some people they don't even believe it in their heart whoever never speaks within their own heart never utters it to themselves فَقَدْ مَاتَ عَلَى شُعْبَةٍ مِّنَ النِّفَاقِ أَوْ كَمَا قَالْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. never talk to yourself about striving and struggling in your life then you've died upon a branch of hypocrisy and no one ever wants to come back to this dunya even though these abwab and these kutub are closed when you come to these chapters nobody ever will want to come back to this dunya illa shaheed except for the martyr that's the only person that will come back to this wretched dunya as we travel this journey through this dunya two perceptions of the dunya that you find in the muslimin one the dunya is wretched and cursed and the second understanding of the dunya is to live in this dunya like a wild beast chasing its prey chasing the hunt chasing the game which camp do we belong in? people who totally shun the dunya feel that it's wretched feel even to earn a halal living has become haram for many people or are we a people who chase after this dunya day and night like an animal chases the game it wants to catch. فَإِنَّ هَذَا إِنذَارْ لِلْغَافِلِينَ And this is a warning for the heedless ones. وَهِدَايَةً لِلْضَالِينَ And a guidance بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى For those people who are astray. وَعُونٌ لِلْمُجْتَهِدِينَ 
and a strengthening for those people who are striving to get closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the imbalance begins when we begin to fail to recognize the purpose of this dunya. This dunya is only a mazra'ah, is a field to plant your seeds. It's a stage of life that you find that just before you come into this world you are in the womb of your mother the unseen there is no concept of being brought forth to accountability for what happens in that stage the second stage of the Muslim is to come out in this world in this world is where you place your seeds and in the third stage of the Muslim is to pluck the fruits in paradise that's the three stages of a human being one there's going to be no questioning upon you maybe there could be a question for the mother during that stage of pregnancy in the way that she's taking care of you and secondly living on this dunya and then the real fruits will come for the believer when he or she plucks them in the akhirah so many the ulama talk that this dunya is only a sirat, is a passage, is a bridge between this world and the following world. Everyone has to cross this bridge, just like that bridge in the akhirah, before you enter into paradise. And likewise between this world and the next world, this is the crossing bridge. So what is a Muslim going to take through this world? And we have been placed inside this world, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرٌ وَمَتَاعٌ إِلَى حِينٌ Your mustaqar, your place of living, of dwelling, is upon this dunya. You have to reside in this world and take the correct benefit of this dunya. قَالَ فِيهَا تَحْيَوْنَا وَفِيهَا تَمُوتُونَ وَمِنْهَا تُخْرَجُونَ In it you will live, in it you will die, and from this world you'll be resurrected. So we have to live in this dunya and begin to focus and visualize that whilst we live in this dunya, what are we going to do? This is the balance of the believer. Seek with the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you الدار الآخرة the hereafter وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا And do not forget your fair share portion of the dunya. وَقَالَ عُلَمَاءَ الْمُفَسِّرُونَ What is the meaning of don't forget your fair share of this dunya? Is doing righteous actions in this dunya that you can collect them inside the hereafter. وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ And show goodness like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown goodness to you. And here I want to extract a istimbat, a fa'idah for all of us. Because many people talk about rectification of aqa'id, of belief. But many of us, aqa'id, iman, aqidah has not penetrated into our heart. Because this is what the Quran teaches. That after iman penetrates into your heart, wa ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk. Show goodness to humanity like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed goodness to you. As to look down upon your brethren, your brothers and sisters, to think you are better than them. This is a concept of jahiliyyah, a concept of ignorance. Even you read the works of Aqa'id, read the works of Shaykh Usab ibn Taymiyyah, towards the end of his works, he says, I hope and I aspire to be amongst those people from Firqatul Najiyah. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah No two scholars would differ about his scholarly level Yet he says these humble words I aspire to be amongst those people And yet we become so flamboyant in our speech And in our attitude towards the rest of humanity That we begin to look down upon people Al-kibar batharul haq wa ghamtun nas Arrogance is not to wear good clothing and good shoes Arrogance is to reject the truth and to look down upon humanity. That's what's wrong amongst many of us. We look down upon other people 
as soon as Islam penetrates into our heart then the rest of society are all trash they're all trash because they don't understand the creed of Ahlul Sunnah well excuse this expression one day you was trash as well you was trash one day and someone taught you the correct sunnah wa ahsin kama ahsan Allah ilayh Allah subhanahu ta'ala took you out min al-bulumati ila nur took you out of the darkness and brought you to the light so why not show the rest of humanity the light show people the correct aqa'id wal ulama it will never ever be taken away from them sahibul aqida sahibul khuluq person of fine aqida is a person of fine character when people define the two and say well I'm good in my aqaid but I could be possibly wrong in my belief fahada khalal fi aqidatik this is a discrepancy a lack of understanding of the belief of ahlul sunnah wal jama'ah a true alim true rabbani a true talib will never find any deficiency between his belief and the way he conducts himself towards humanity wa ahsin kama ahsan Allah ilayk and once again the balance فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقٍ some people say give me only this world I only want this world and they will have no share مَا لَهُمْ مِنْ نَصِيب no share of the آخِرَةِ that's what some people pray but the correct prayer of the believer is وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا give us good in this dunya hasana وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا وَاللَّهُ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ That's the prayer of the believer. What does that mean? If the dunya is wretched, give me good in this world and give me good in the hereafter. And I tell you a modern interpretation of this world, and I know I've said this many times, and the brothers may have heard this many times from myself, but I'll say it again. The good of this world is wealth, is property. To seek your own livelihood, to seek your own sustenance. How many of us rely on these people for our sustenance? How many of us rely on sustenance upon these people? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you two hands, two eyes, a good body, a good mind. That's not the way of the mu'min, the believer. Al-yadul ulya the upper hand is better than the lower hand al-mu'minul qawi the strong believer is better than the weak believer as for many of us we are weak believers that's what many of us are we may think we're strong believers but when you cannot fend for your family when you cannot take care of your family you cannot provide for your family you're a weak mu'min when you leave it to the state to fend your people to fend your children see the results in 10 years time in 20 years time what will happen to the shabab in our society that if they're not created and we're not created and geared to look after our own people and our own welfare then this dunya will become hell for us and hell for our children the dunya is only cursed when it penetrates into your heart when it said to Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi is it possible for a person to possess wealth? Is it allowed for them to possess wealth? Yes it is. As long as it doesn't dwell into your heart. Doesn't twinkle into your heart. Go into your heart. As long as the dunya remains in your hand. You control that wealth. But once that wealth goes into your heart. Then that is the end of that individual. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ dunya. إِلَّا مَتَاءُ الْغُرُورِ What is this world? Living on this world except for one great big deception. One great big deception is what this world is. فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا Don't let this world deceive you. And I'm not against wealth and possession and provision. I'm not trying to make things haram. Because the Quran highlights, Ya Bani Adam, Khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. O children of Adam, take the fine attire, the fine adornment, 
the fine clothing whenever you come to the masjid. وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Eat and drink and rejoice. But don't be scoundrels. Don't waste. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like the wasteful ones. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ Who is making the zina of Allah haram? Who is making the good things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal for the people of this world? أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِهِ وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ مِنَ الرِّزْقِ Taking out the good things of this dunya وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ Good provisions for his ibad. Who is trying to make these things haram? قُلْ هِيَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Say these good things of the world are for the people, the believers in this world and then likewise خَالِسَةً يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ and be specifically for them in the hereafter. So I'm not trying to make the dunya haram. The good things of the dunya which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal for the Muslims and for the disbelievers. But the reason why many of the good things have been given in this dunya is for the believers. For the believers to rejoice in the good things. And likewise to rejoice with them once again in the akhirah. Al-mal wal-banoon zinatul hayatid dunya Wealth and children are the beautiful things of this dunya. زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّحَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَالْخَيْلِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ وَالْعَنْعَامِ وَالْحَرْفِ زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ Beautified for mankind. حُبُّ الشَّحَوَاتِ I love for these alluring things. Women, children, gold, silver, والخيل المسومة, branded horses, Arabian stallions, in today's terminology, fast cars, transport is beloved to mankind. والأنعام, cattle, والحرف, tilth, land, property. ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا. That is a provision of this dunya, of this world. Wallahu indahu husnul ma'ab. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the best end and the best, best return. Bal tuhibboon al-ajila wa tadharoon al-akhira. You love the temporarily pleasurable things. Ajila. You like those things that come quickly to you. Wa tadharoon al-akhira. And you leave behind the akhira. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا But you give preference to this world وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَعَبْقَى But the hereafter is ever beneficial and more preference over this world. And you need to lose one of them to gain the pleasure of the other one. Because if you don't find that balance you don't just lose the akhirah you'd lose this world as well. خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ And that's what's happened to many of us. That in the seeking of this world, we lose the Akhirah. And you lose both of them. You lose this world, and you lose the Akhirah. You cannot be content with just this world. وَفَرِحُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا مَتَاعِ وَفَرِحُوا They rejoice with this world. What is this world? فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا مَتَاعٌ Except for a brief passing enjoyment. How can you be deceived? يَا أُخَلَى Intellectual ones. مؤمنون Believers. Ayat after ayat talking about this dunya. وَفَرِحُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Rejoice in this world. And what is this world in comparison to the Akhirah except for a small path in this world? فَمَا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ What is the comparison of this world to the Akhirah إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ Except for something minute. This dunya is something minute in comparison to the Akhirah. 
قُلْ مَتَاعُ الدُّنْيَا قَلِيلٌ Say the provisions of this world are قَلِيل وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى وَلَا تُظْلَمُونَ فَتِيدًا And say the hereafter is far better than you وَلَا تُظْلَمُونَ فَتِيلًا And you'll not be oppressed فتيلة. And فتيل is not just a date seed It is that thread on the date seed To even that small minute degree You will not be oppressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Remember if something of this dunya is taken away from you It is stored for you in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That when these people have these things of the dunya And you don't have it that is classified as al istidraj The leaving of the rope By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To let these people enjoy And to rejoice And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grabs that rope from these people Then there's no turning back for them So the Muslim shouldn't fall into this shallow understanding I don't have the dunya I have no possession of this dunya and what do these people possess? This world is nothing in comparison to the Akhirah except for dip your finger in an ocean. So let you see what clings to your finger. One dip. And that ocean is paradise. That small dip that we rejoice in on a daily basis. Fattaku dunya. This world is a lush green place. Thus the Prophet Muhammad said, Fattaku dunya. Fear this world. Wattaku nisa. And fear the fitna of women. Fattaku dunya. Why should you fear this world? Because this world will overtake you Take your mind away From the path towards The akhirah And the mu'min sees through this dunya And this has been narrated about the Isra wal Mi'raj That the dunya appeared to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu As an old woman With grey hair Beauty has been taken away from her There is nothing left That is the parable of this dunya with all respect to our respected sisters but an old woman nothing is left that's the perception of this dunya how did he see this dunya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kun dunya kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharib wa abiru sabil be in this dunya as a stranger or as a wayfarer as a traveller how many of us have heard this hadith on so many occasions? Are we ghuraba in the dunya at the moment? Are we strangers? Do we feel like strangers? Do we feel like wayfarers and travelers in this dunya? A traveler only stops in the shade. Mali wa mali dunya. What what is my relationship with this dunya? Except for a traveller who stops and rests underneath a shade. Al Hadith Marawahu Imam Ahmad in Musnadihi. And likewise, you find Umar ibn al Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That in the dunya has been exposed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the wealth and the possessions of this dunya. Umar ibn al Khattab enters into the house. Or into the hujra of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam And sees him lying on a reed mat A mat made from palm leaves Try it someday To lie down On straw put together And you'll feel it would scar your body Leave marks on your feet for those people who prayed on the straw mat Umar begins to cry and says look at the leaders of the dunya and what they possess and what they own and you lie on a mat like this sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what does he state? 
Leave these people alone. Mali wa mali dunya. What is with me and the dunya? I have nothing to do with this dunya. In the masalika rakib. I am only a traveler who travels through this dunya and takes shade underneath the tree and then rides these beasts again and continues again. Are we Rukab at the moment? Are we travelers in this dunya at the moment? And likewise, even walking through the souk, walking through the marketplace, something which is permissible that he wants to still teach his companions a lesson that the most wretched places on this world are the marketplaces he says to his companions who wants this dead carcass who wants this jifa this dead animal for one dinar they said ya rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam even used to give it to us free, we would not take it. Because whilst it was living, it was disabled, defective, it had slit ears. We wouldn't take it when it was living. And you want to give it to us whilst it's dead. And to send the message home to them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just like this dead carcass has no value in front of you. Likewise, the dunya has no value in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dunya is even more despised. Al-Hadith marwahu Imam Tirmidhi fi sunanihi. What is the meaning of the dunya? Because I left that linguistically to the end. Ad dunya as some of the ulama vlogger highlight, has been taken from the word adna, lowly, abased. No value. That's the linguistic meaning of dunya. And the Prophet Muhammad prophesied the expansion of the dunya, or in specific, fitna tul mal, the fitna of wealth. That will hit who? That will hit the Arabs. People talk about the revival of Tawheed. Shirk is not just to worship a grave or al hajar or a shajar, a stone or a tree. One aspect is also to worship your hawa, your desires and your lust, and to worship material possessions. That's also a concept of shirk that many people tend to shrug aside because it'll hit them hard. Because that's the shirk that they suffer from. The fitna of mal has overtaken these people. This dunya is a stepping stone to the akhirah. That in that final world, you will become shaqiyun aw sa'id. In a state of happiness or wretchedness. Become an nahus, wretched despicable and that is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ شَقُوا فَفِي النَّارِ as for those people who are wretched those people will be inside the fire لَهُمْ فِيهَا زَفِيرٌ وَشَهِيقٌ those people inside the fire you'll hear their sighs and their sobs some of the ulama go to highlight those are the foolish ones and some have even used this word that individual is a jackass the person who ends up being inside the fire khalidina fiha residing inside there forever ma damat is samawatu wal ard illa ma sha'a rabbuk inna rabbaka fa'alu lima yurid residing there for eternity wa amma alladhina su'idu as for those people who are blessed فَفِي الْجَنَّةِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا They will reside forever in paradise as long as the heavens and the earth remain there. أَفَاءً غَيْرَ مَجْذُوبٍ There is a reward, a gift without any end, without any break. Uninterrupted for the believers. 
only the believers will have paradise in the akhirah and likewise in this world what does that mean man lam yadkhul jannatu dunya lam yadkhul jannatu akhirah whoever doesn't enter into the paradise of this earth will never ever enter into the paradise of the akhirah and if my memory serves me correct at this stage and this has been collected by Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziya referring to his teacher and the Shaykh Shaykh Ustam ibn Taymiyyah whoever doesn't enter paradise in this world won't enter into the paradise of the akhirah and the Quran testifies to this as well لَهُمُ الْبُشْرَ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ they are the people who are going to have blessings in this world and in the akhirah so paradise even on this earth is only for the believers and then the real paradise is only for the believers once again when they return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the people who chase the world they are the ones that are going to be wretched poverty is placed in between the two eyes and the people who chase the akhirah then the dunya chases them and the dunya comes to them and possession of the dunya comes to them poverty is placed for those people in front of their eyes in a statement collected by Imam al-Tabrani and this hadith or this statement needs to be checked but just bin Bab al-Fa'idah will mention it whoever begins or becomes steeped in the love of this world three things will cling to him Greed which will never be satisfied. Greed which will never be satisfied. Hope which will never be realized. Difficulty and troubles which will never cease. That's what will happen to a person who begins to search for the dunya. A greed that will never be satisfied. Another hadith testifies to that. That a son of Adam will never be happy with one valley of gold until he has another valley of gold and the only thing that will quench that thirst is at turab is the dust kinaya and in most a description of death and likewise hope which will never be realized that I will do this tomorrow or I will do that procrastination is what they call it the word in Arabic sofa sofa af'al that so I will do this or I will do that and then finally difficulty and troubles which will never cease to come upon that individual what is difficulty and troubles life which will become restricted that individual will have a restricted life يَجْعَلْ صَدْرَهُ ضَيِّقًا حَرَجًا كَأَنَّمَا يَسَّعَدُوا فِي السَّمَاءِ restricted like a person going up into the heavens troubles and calamities and problems will come in that individual's life in the same two, two ayat that I just mentioned now in the same two ayat the opposite is mentioned for the believer أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ have you not seen the one whose chest has been expanded to Islam فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ he is upon light from his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Islam is the greatest commodity that you need to believe it within your heart that this will take away all of my problems and my troubles and give me tranquility in my mind, in my body and in my soul. And whoever seeks the dunya then despised by everyone even by their loved ones and even by their own selves and this indignity or curse has been thrown down upon them and I know that this verse refers to Al-Yahud but ulama of tafsir talk about Al-Ibra bi'umum al la bi khususi sabab the lesson is to be taken from the generality of the words and not from the specification of the revelation 
ضربت عليهم الذلة أينما ثقفوا Indignity is smashed upon these people wherever they go So I know many of the people who say that refers to Al-Yahud La'natullahi alayhim That verse also refers to Muslims as well today ضربت عليهم الذلة أينما ثقفوا Wherever you go يا أيها المسلمون Indignity is smashed upon you There is no value for Muslims anymore You know when they kill us They don't even use a bullet anymore Because a bullet is too expensive Our blood is cheap Don't waste a bullet on a Muslim Wherever you look Duribat alayhimu zilla Indignity is smashed upon us And when people do call for revivalism فَهَاُلَيْ إِرْحَابِيُّونَ They are terrorists What is terrorism? What is freedom of speech? The Sharia teaches you that you to gain your rights To live under the banner of Al-Islam That is the biggest thorn at the moment in our da'wah is hadood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how should the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be implemented that's the biggest debate that exists amongst us because many of us in our hearts are following the da'wah of modernization that can the hadood of Allah be implemented in the 21st century is it possible is it really applicable in western society today that the Sharia will come? Will it come? People of Sunnah say that will it come? How will it come? Huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al haq li yudhirahu ala deen kulli wa law kari al mushrikun. He is the one who sent his messenger with huda, with guidance, and the right deen to prevail over all other ways of life. If you don't believe that in your heart, you already lost. You have already lost. You don't believe that in your heart, that Islam is going to be victorious. Islam will always be victorious. People will not be victorious. Kalimatullah hiya al The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be supreme. And if you go away from the message of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create a new form of people who will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love them. And this indignity which has been thrown upon so many of these people, the only way these people come out of this indignity or how they alleviate themselves, and unfortunately many Muslims have begun to do this as well, is through the concept of suicide. You know, you think dunya gives you great things. The Scandinavian countries, the highest annual income in the whole world. The average wage in this country, at the time when I was researching, some 18,000 pounds a year. The average wage in the Scandinavian countries is 36,000 pounds a year. The highest standard of living, of commodities, blonde haired blue eyed yet the highest rate of suicide exists in this country and even this country 5,755 people committed suicide in the year 2003 and these people boast this is the lowest number since 1973 so they talk about freedom of life and the so-called quote-unquote great United States of America. There's a famous Arab proverb, fix your own home before you fix someone else's home. They enter Muslim land and say, we've come there to alleviate you, give you freedom, give you democracy, give you a way of life. Go home and rectify your own home. More than 30,000 people 
in the United States of America commit suicide on an annual basis. And they say that's a moderate number. You know, Bush talks about a way of life. Got to give the people in Iraq liberation. Got to take the Shabab out of what they're doing. Look at your own Shabab. One in three American teenagers have contemplated committing suicide. One in three in your own country. You've got nothing to give us. And you talk about freedom of life when you're suffering these problems in your own land. Every 17 minutes, someone commits suicide in the United States. Every 17 minutes. And so far, probably three or four people whilst I've been lecturing have committed suicide. And they've come in to alleviate Muslims. You want to give us something? What is there that you can give Muslims? What is there that you can give us? Give us a better road? That road is only developed for your own purpose. Al Dahabul Aswad. The black gold. And you know what the black gold is? All of these wars is not a war on terror. It's a war on possession of Muslim property. Many of us are sleeping. Don't get into siyasa. Don't get into politics. Don't get involved in this. Wake up and begin to understand world politics or what is happening in the Muslim globe at the moment. They don't mind you sitting here making zikr. They don't mind you reading salah. They don't mind you even memorizing the Quran as long as you don't understand the Quran. As long as you don't call towards the Quran and the implementation of the Quran. So do as much of that as you want. Because your da'wah will just become like the Sufiya. But when you believe in a real struggle, in raising your people, and in raising the Sharia, then you become dangerous. We are all fundamentals. Because we all believe in the return of the Sharia. And the return of the Sharia will give them peace and tranquility. And I've said this many times. I'm not a dreamer. And I don't dream. But history has testified when the Sharia was implemented, non-Muslims lived under our rule better than the way you treat them today. That's a fact. You call us anti-Semitic. You say you hate Al-Yahud. Billahi alaykum. That when Jews were persecuted, where did they run to? They fled to Al-Andalus. They fled to Al-Maghrib, where the Jewish community still lives there today. We did not kill six million Jews. We didn't kill them. You're the ones that got blood in your hands. You have to apologize to them. We don't have to apologize to no one. We did not take down the Twin Towers. You yourselves took them down. So in your disguise and war and terror, you will kill your own people because you don't care about them. If there's anybody that does care about humanity, then that is maqasid al-sharia. Read it in great detail. The purpose of the Sharia is hifdul insan, is preservation of humanity. That's what Islam will give them. We will preserve Muslims and non-Muslims. And if somebody commits atrocity who is living under the Sharia and a person has given the jizya, that is paradise for them on this world. That if Muslim commits atrocity towards them, the Sharia says, you have to take the side of the non-Muslim. That's what our deen says. So we're not against no one. The only thing that we want is the coming back of paradise on this world once again. For both Muslims and non-Muslims at the same time. And we can continue to quote the artificial happiness that people live in at the moment. That 26 million people in this country 
are in a state of depression. In a state of depression, 26 million. This government from spending 100 million pounds is now spending 381 million pounds on controlling depression in this country. Everything of these people that they possess becomes a, a punishment for them, a trial for them. Their wealth, their children, everything. It is only the believer with the correct perception wealth becomes a blessing. Children become a blessing. Kurrata a'yun become coolness and tenderness of the eye. Kama dhakra imam al suyuti fi tafsiri al durr al manthur. What does it mean? Kurrata a'yun coolness of your eyes. In this dunya first, your children become a blessing for you. Their children don't care about them. Their wealth doesn't care about them. Everything is taken away from these people. So the real paradise is what we are calling to. That all of us need to believe that living in this dunya, take from the dunya that which is correct, leave that which is false, and seek from the wealth of the dunya to get closer to the akhirah. And develop a consciousness of the akhirah. That if the dunya just go past you, then overlook it. Because your reward will be stored with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the akhirah. And be given to you then. Then you will begin to live like paradise on this earth. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us itminanul qulub, the tranquility in our hearts, to live on this dunya in a state of bliss and happiness. That no matter what takes place around the world, but within you, your heart is in a state of contentment. In a state of peace and rest. أَلَا إِنَّا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ Indeed, in the dhikr of Allah, do hearts find tranquility and peace. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place these words in our mizan of hasanat. And may God take these words whenever it's been the ayat of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ahadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and implement it to the best of our ability. Any words which have come from my own self or freelance interpretation should just be removed and totally ignored and this is based upon the evidences of the Quran and the Sunnah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me and forgive all of you and raise our rank not just in this dunya but in the akhirah as well Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiul alim wa tuba alayna inna kanta tawabu al-raheem subhanakullam wa bihamdik nashadu allah la ila anta astaghfiruka wa natubu alayka wa rahmatullah